All right, so we're on dimensional analysis practice worksheet number one. I've already shown you guys the dimensional analysis technique. And so now what we're going to do is we're, start go we're going to start putting that into practice, okay? Now if we look at problem number one, it says convert 32 grams to kilograms. You guys might remember that I said the first thing that we do is we figure out what kind of equivalent statement we need to solve this problem. So if I want to convert between grams and kilograms, all right, so here's my gram and here's my kilogram. You guys see that? What we need is we need an equivalent statement that relates grams and kilograms. So what is that equivalent statement going to be, you guys? How many grams, for example, are in a kilogram? This is where you guys answer. There are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. So I'm going to write that right here. 1,000 grams equals 1 kilogram. There's my equivalent statement. Are you all with me so far? Okay. Now, what I've done is I've taken that equivalent statement and I've written it in the form of a conversion factor in this problem. So I've already set up my train tracks, okay? And what I did is I put the one kilogram on the top and the 1,000 grams on the bottom. Now you guys help me out. Why did I choose to put the 1,000 grams of this equivalent statement right here? Why did I choose to put that on the bottom? so that the gram units can cancel out. So by setting it up in this manner, I'm going to be able to cancel out grams. And then, you guys, remember that whatever goes across the top means that I'm going to be multiplying. So that's 32 times 1. And then whatever is in the bottom, I'm going to divide. So that's why right here it says divided by 1,000. So the way to get the answer to this problem is to do 32 times 1 divide by 1,000. When I divide by 1,000, that's the same thing as moving my decimal three places to the left. And so that gives me the answer 0.032 kilograms. Does that make sense? So the first one was set up completely for you. The only thing that I didn't write in there was this equivalent statement up here that I then turned into the conversion factor that you see right there. That's the only thing I didn't show, but does everybody understand why I oriented that equivalent statement into that particular conversion factor? Yes, yes we orient it so as to get the unit that I started with, which was grams, to cancel out. So we put the gram quantity, that right there, the 1,000 grams, that goes on the bottom so as to get the gram unit to cancel out. Okay, so now let's look at number two. Okay, now, you guys, in number two, you're actually going to see a prefix that was not in the table that you had in your module four notes. Okay, right here, you've got the letters DK, which basically represents DECA, D-E-C-A or D-E-K-A. Okay, it's actually written both ways or spelled both ways. But a decameter would be 10 meters, okay? So deca is 10 of something, all right? So I'm going to start this problem by writing out my equivalent statement. There would be 10, whoops, excuse me, 10 meters. I said that wrong a minute ago. There would be 10 meters in a decameter. And you could write that big D, little m, or you could put in the DKM. Either way, it's perfectly acceptable. Okay, but it means deca. So there would be 10 meters. In other words, I could lay out 10 meter sticks, one end to the other, and when I lay out 10 meter sticks, that equals a decameter. Not little d, because if it were little d right here, that would be deci, which is something completely different. Okay, a deca is a bigger thing. All right, now, what we did here was we had to take that equivalent statement, the 10 meters equals a decameter, take that equivalent statement and put it into the form of a conversion factor. So here's my conversion factor right here. How was it that I decided to put the one decameter on top and the 10 meters on the bottom? Again, it's all about getting the units to cancel. So by putting the 10 meters on the bottom, I can get this meter unit right here 
to cancel out. And I'm left with units of decameters, which is what the problem is wanting me to convert to. So this is the same thing as saying 8 times 1, because anything across the numerator is multiplied, and then divided by 10, because anything that's in the denominator, you divide by that. Okay? And so 8 times 1 divided by 10, you get 0 0.8 decameters. Are we good so far? All right, you guys are doing great. Okay, so the next one, I'm weaning you down just a little bit. In the next problem, I've still set it up for you with the exception of the equivalent statement, but I didn't give you the answer. You guys have to help me figure out the answer. So this time, you guys, I'm actually going to set it up differently than what it is in the problem, and there's a reason why, okay? If you look at number three, we are converting centigrams into milligrams. Do you guys see that? So in other words, we're converting one prefix to another prefix. And do you guys remember what I said if we're going from prefix to prefix, that we needed to go through what? Does anybody remember? If we're going prefix to prefix, we should go through the base unit. We should go through the base unit. You got it. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set it up a little bit differently than what is shown right here, okay? So in other words, I'm going to figure out how many centigrams are in a gram. So there are how many centigrams in a gram? A hundred. So 100 centigrams equals a gram. And I also need to know the relationship between grams and milligrams. How many milligrams are in a gram? What does milli mean? One one thousandth. And so there would be one thousand milligrams in a gram. So there's my two equivalent statements. So I'm actually going to set this up as a two-step problem, okay, instead of a one-step problem. And then I'll show you the relationship between the two. So if I set this one up as a two-step problem, like we've talked about before, then what I would actually do is I would go 12.5 centigrams, like that, okay? And now I'm going to use this first equivalent statement that I wrote up here, the 100 centigrams equals a gram. And I need to orient that in the form of a conversion factor or a fraction so as to get my centigram unit to cancel out. So how am I going to set it up? Am I going to put my 100 centigrams on the top or my 100 centigrams on the bottom? bottom? On the bottom. So I'm going to put my 100 centigrams on the bottom and my 1 gram on the top. Now, why did we choose to put the 100 centigrams on the bottom? To get my units to cancel out. Exactly. Now, we're going to go with our second equivalent statement. The 1,000 milligrams equals a gram. How am I going to set that one up to get rid of grams and to convert grams into milligrams? Where am I going to put my one gram right here? Am I going to put it on the top or the bottom of my next fraction? On the bottom, exactly. So one gram goes on the bottom. What am I going to put on the top? The, not the centigrams, the what? The milligrams. So my 1,000 milligrams goes on the top. So I would set it up like this. Okay, which is the same as, I'm going to come up here to the top because I know I'm running out of room. This is the same as saying 12.5 times 1 times 1,000. And then all of that divided by 100. Does that make sense? Or 100 times 1. 1 doesn't change anything. Okay, now you guys, if you wanted to simplify the problem, 1,000 over 100, have you guys seen the whole, like, crossing out zeros to simplify in math class? So I've got three zeros up here on the top, and I've got two zeros down here on the bottom. Well, I could get rid of those two zeros, and I can get rid of two zeros up here. And so 1,000 over 100 simply simplifies to 10 over 1. Does that make sense? which is why in the original setup to the problem right here, it said 10 milligrams over 1 centigram. Does that make sense? It's just 1,000 over 100 simplified to 10 over 1. 
All right, so in other words, I'm gonna take 12.5 and multiply by 10. So you guys, what should my final answer be if I take 12.5 and multiply by 10? 125, and I like what I just heard Nikki say. She said 125 mg. She put the units there. Shout out to Nikki, okay? She put the units with her answer so that it wasn't a naked number. So we've got 125 milligrams, okay?